Recognizing Craniosynostosis At birth, the skull is composed of separate bone fragments that are connected with skull sutures. The sutures enable the primary growth of the skull. Craniosynostosis occurs when one or more of the skull sutures are prematurely closed. This causes characteristic changes in the shape of the skull and comes with a risk of developing insufficient volume for the brain. Early diagnosis is essential to offer effective treatment in affected infants. This video discusses four types of single suture synostosis. Sagittal synostosis, metopic synostosis, right coronal synostosis, and right lambdoid synostosis. Sagittal synostosis. The most common craniosynostosis involves the sagittal suture between the anterior and posterior fontanelle. Premature closure of the sagittal suture inhibits skull growth to the sides, resulting in an elongated and narrow skull shape evidently seen when looking from above. Frequently, a ridge can be palpated along the closed sagittal suture. When looking at the front of the head, you notice the narrowing of the head and pinching at the temples, called bitemporal pinching. From the side, the head appears long with a prominent forehead and a bulging occiput. The highest point of the head is often seen at the front, which is called anterior displacement of the vertex. At the back of the head, the occiput might be pointed, which is referred to as an occipital bullet. In conclusion, sagittal synostosis is characterized by an elongated narrow skull, a ridge over the sagittal suture, a prominent forehead, anterior displacement of the vertex, and an occipital bullet. This is called scaphocephaly, as seen in this 3D image in the video. Metopic synostosis. When the frontal suture, also known as the metopic suture, is prematurely closed, growth between the two forehead bone fragments is inhibited. As a result, the forehead becomes narrow and wedge-shaped, best seen from above. A prominent vertical ridge over the metopic suture is palpated in the midline. When looking at the front of the head, you notice lateral orbital retrusion with associated bilateral narrowing at the temples. Moreover, the eyes are set closer together, known as hypotellarism. Compensatory widening of the side and back of the head can occur. From the side, the forehead is in line with the nasium, and the back of the head might be more prominent. From the back of the head, the compensatory occipital biparietal widening is most evident. In conclusion, metopic synostosis is characterized by a narrow wedge-shaped forehead, a vertical ridge over the metopic suture, by temporal pinching, hypotellarism, and compensatory occipital biparietal widening at the back of the head. This is called trigonocephaly, as seen in the 3D image in the video. Right coronal synostosis. When one of the coronal sutures is prematurely closed, forward growth of the forehead is prohibited on that side. Left coronal synostosis can also occur when the coronal suture on the left side of the head closes prematurely. As a result, the frontal bone is asymmetric, flattening the forehead on the affected side and the compensatory bossing on the opposite side. In the front view, a typical asymmetrical facial appearance is noticed. The eye socket is elevated with an upward position of the brow, also known as the harlequin sign. From the side, the prominence of the upper eyelid and globe is noted as a result of the recessing of the lateral orbital rim. From the back, a little asymmetry is noticed. In conclusion, Coronal synostosis 
is characterized by an asymmetrical facial appearance and flattening of the forehead, with compensatory bossing on the contralateral side. This is called anterior plagiocephaly, as seen in the 3D image in the video. Right lambdoid synostosis. In rarer conditions, one of the lambdoid sutures is prematurely closed. In lambdoid synostosis, growth of the skull base is also affected, indicated by the ear on that side being located at a lower position, best seen from behind. Moreover, backward growth of the occiput is inhibited on that side, which is accompanied by contralateral occipital bossing. Left lamboid synostosis can also occur when the lambdoid suture on the left side of the head closes prematurely. In lambdoid synostosis, growth of the skull base is affecting the face anatomy with secondary distortion or asymmetry, otherwise called facial scoliosis. From the side of the head, a slightly lower position of the ear can be noticed on the affected side. Also from the top view, the asymmetry at the back of the head is visible, also known as posterior plagiocephaly. In conclusion, unilambdoid synostosis is characterized by the downward position of the ear and flattening of the back of the head at the affected side. This is compensated by occipital bossing on the opposite side as seen in the 3D image in the video. This video has explained the different features of four forms of craniosynostosis and how to recognize them when encountering a patient with a suspected form of unisuture craniosynostosis. When in doubt, it is recommended to contact one of the expert centers with an urn cranio to get an expert's opinion on this specific case. Common pitfalls Some clinical conditions are commonly confused with the clinical features of craniosynostosis. Common pitfalls when diagnosing craniosynostosis include positional plagiocephaly, early closure of the fontanelle, and microcephaly. Positional plagiocephaly. Positional or deformational plagiocephaly is very common and results in repeated external pressure on the developing skull. It is most often confused with craniosynostosis as both conditions present a plagiocephalic head shaped deformity. However, positional plagiocephaly is more a parallel displacement of the head and does not affect the skull sutures and thereby brain growth or development. Positional plagiocephaly will generally be resolved through physiotherapy or helmet therapy or both. Premature closure fontanelle. The soft spots or fontanelles of the baby's head vary widely in their size, shape and timing of closure. Closed fontanelles without any signs of a skull-shaped deformity or palpable ridge are not linked to craniosynostosis. Microcephaly. Microcephaly is a rare condition where a baby's head is much smaller than expected for that baby's age. It refers to global growth retardation of the skull and might be associated with genetic abnormalities or premature brain injury. It is seldom associated with primary craniosynostosis.